Today we're going to look at an integral that looks fairly simple but has a really nice trick in its evaluation or at least the evaluation that will show which I found on the Math Stack Exchange if you'd like to check out the post. So we're going to evaluate the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus x times the natural log of x. And we're going to do this by first splitting it up and then using a nice trick with integration by parts. So let's get started. So we'll first split this thing up as the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the minus x times the natural log of x plus the integral from 1 to infinity of, well, the same integrand, kind of obviously, so e to the minus x natural log of x dx. Now I'm going to underline each of these in different colors. So one will be this magenta color, and then the second one will be this blue color. And then I'll lay out the integration by parts for each of these, well, parts over here on the left. So let's start with the blue integration by parts because that's fairly straightforward. So here we're going to set u equal to the natural log of x. Observe that that's going to make our du part equal to dx over x. And then we'll set dv equal to e to the minus x dx. That's going to make our v equal to minus x, or sorry, minus e to the minus x. So those are fairly obvious choices because we know how to take the antiderivative of e to the minus x pretty easily. The antiderivative of the natural log is a little bit more complicated and would create a more complicated object. Then, well, let's look at this magenta part. So we're going to have the same setup. We'll set u equal to natural log of x, which of course makes du equal to the same dx over x. And we'll set dv equal to e to the minus x dx. But now we'll use the fact that integration is only unique up to a constant. And so instead of taking the antiderivative of dv to be minus e to the minus x, we'll take the antiderivative v to be 1 minus e to the minus x. And you might say, well, why do you do this? Well, that's because that creates all parts of this that are convergent. We'll see it when we write it out. Okay, so now let's write each of these out. So just as a reminder, we're using this formula that says u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. So the standard integration by parts formula. Okay, so let's write out this magenta part first. So we'll have u times v, I'll write that as 1 minus e to the minus x times the natural log of x, evaluated from 0 to infinity, keeping in mind that when we say evaluated either of those parts, we really have to take a limit. And then it'll be minus the integral of v du. I'll take that minus sign and just have it swap this subtraction. So that'll give me plus the integral from, oh, this should be 0 to 1. But still, the same thing stands. We have to take a limit at the zero part. Okay, so anyway, back to this. So minus e to the minus x minus 1 over x dx. Okay, so all of that is from our magenta box integration by parts over here. And now for our blue box integration by parts, we'll have minus e to the minus x times the natural log of x, again, evaluated from 1 to infinity. When we evaluate at infinity, we're really taking a limit, and then we'll have plus some minus signs canceled there, the integral from 0 to infinity, or 1 to infinity of e to the minus x over x dx. And like I said, that is our blue integration by parts. Now let's look at each of these. If you plug 1 into this function, you'll get 0, because the natural log of 1 is 0. And if you take the limit as x approaches 0 from above, you get an indeterminate form of type uh, 0 times infinity. But when all of the dust settles, that gives you 0 as well. So here we get 0 for this expression. And very, very similarly, we will get 0 for this expression as well, leaving us with the sum of these two integrals. And next up, I'm going to use the following definition limit definition, I should say, of e to the minus x 
as the limit as n goes to infinity of one minus x over n raised to the n power. And I'm gonna use that in both of these integrals. So let's do that. Here we have the limit as n goes to infinity, and then we'll have the integral from zero to one of, let's see, one minus x over n raised to the n minus one all over x dx. And then over here we'll have plus the integral from one to infinity of essentially the same thing. So that'll be one minus x over n raised to the n power over x. Well, the same thing without this minus one. Okay, so that's looking good. But now what we'll do is push these two together and then, well, maybe keep this minus one over x kind of by itself. So the way to do that is like this. So we'll have the limit as n approaches infinity and then we'll have our integral from zero to infinity of one minus x over n raised to the n power minus one over x dx. Now notice that we've introduced an integral of one over x from one to infinity from this integral. So we've got to take care of that. And because of the signs, that becomes the integral from one up to infinity of, let's see, it'll be one over x dx. But now I'm going to do one little next thing, and that is observe that I can take these infinities and replace them with n's because this n is approaching infinity, and that's how you define an improper integral. And we've got this new expression right here. Okay, so let's see where this takes us. Okay, so this is where we left ourselves on the last board. We had this limit as n goes to infinity of the integral from one to n of one over x minus the integral from zero to n of one minus one over x to the n over n all over x. So I've rewritten things a little bit, but not too much. Now let's perform a substitution on this second integral. So let's see, the kind of obvious substitution is to let u equal one minus x over n. Observe that that means that x will be equal to n minus n times u, or in other words, n times one minus u. Now let's also observe that that means that dx will be equal to, let's see, it'll be minus n times du. But now let's quickly observe that that means that dx over x is simply equal to minus du over one minus u. Those n's cancel. And it's kind of um, natural to do it like that because here we have a dx over x. Now what about the bounds of integration? So let's observe when x is equal to zero, that pretty clearly makes u equal to one. And as x is equal to n, that tells us that u is equal to zero. Okay, so that's the full rules for our substitution. But let's maybe take this minus sign and use it to flip these. So instead of going from one to zero, we'll go to, from zero to one. So that'll leave us with the limit as n goes to infinity. We'll bring this one down. So one to n of one by x dx minus the integral from one or zero to one of one minus u to the n over one minus u du. Okay, great. But now that's gonna give us the limit as n goes to infinity of, well observe that this is the natural log of x evaluated from one to n and then we can rewrite this as the integral from zero to one of one plus u plus all the way up to u to the n minus one du, just using the rules for a finite geometric series. But integrating that out and evaluating it is fairly straightforward. And we end up in the end with the limit as n goes to infinity of the natural log of n minus one plus a half plus a third ending all the way up here at one over n. But actually this limit has a very famous value and that is related to this thing called the euler mascheroni constant. In fact, it's exactly negative that constant. So there you have it. That's the value of this nice simple looking integral over here. And that's a good place to stop.